YouTubers, welcome back for another adventure. And what you're looking at is my Taylor Dunn. This is known as a B610. Somewhere along the line, somebody upgraded it and put a 12 horsepower into it. What happened is I bought it like this. Somebody had blown the transaxle out. It will only go in reverse. Well, that leaves me a few choices. Fixing the old transaxle. And once again, with that crack case and so forth, that's not happening. I tried to find a replacement transaxle, exactly what that is. And I've pulled all my connections and been working at it for several months. And I mean, I got nothing. I can't find any parts for this thing. So that means a substitution. So I went through my hoard of stuff. And the closest thing I came up with was this Yamaha golf cart transaxle and as you're putting it in there and trying to make things work and line up and so forth and on I mean no matter what you have to have the drive pulley in the right place right you cannot be in the wrong place with the drive pulley or you can't get the belt on there so once I figured that out then I started checking it and it appears as if the Taylor Dunn axle is a little different than the other one in a few respects. First of all, uh, this that wheel is in about an inch, and that wheel, that one, is out about an inch. So they kind of built it off a little bit, and you would say, oh, just straighten it out, but then the belt doesn't work, so really can't do that. I can make up some of that space with this axle by putting some spacers on there. So that's the first thing we kind of got away with. Um, next problem, and I'm talking about just getting it into the, um, into the back of the cart, right? To get it up on all four wheels again. So I could get around that. The next situation I run into, the motor mounts are a little bit different. But I think I think I can uh, fake my way around that without too much trouble, right? Basically, it's just held on by U um, U clamps, so I could get around that. When it comes to forward and reverse, the linkages are going to be kind of completely different. But <clears throat> I think I could fake my way around that. And the last thing is, see how this guy's got the brakes on top, and that one has it on the bottom? I think that might possibly come off, and I could flip it around and do something with the brakes. I'm not positive. I think so. So, Okay, here's what the Yamaha rear axle transaxle looks like in the... in the Taylor Dunn and it won't quite go into place because I have some brackets to cut off you can see that needs to be cut and that over there needs to be trimmed up so no big surprise that it's not an exact fit looks like I gotta move it this way a little bit to get the sprockets to line up right you see that sprocket and that sprocket it's so but generally speaking, it looks like it'll go in. Okay, tubers, here it is on all four wheels. I did manage to cob that Yamaha golf cart rear into it. But see how far that wheel is in? Right. And see how far this wheel is out? Right, almost flush. I really had to move the transaxle this way and I had to because if you don't keep the belt kind of straight if I had it more that way the um, belt would have a tendency to idle and drag it along and also as you gave it more gas this expands and it would scrape things so I had no choice with that as of right now to move it this way I actually had to take 
the brake apparatus off that wheel. You know the little lever you pull on to apply the brakes? I actually had to take it off, unfortunately. Um, as of now, there's only one U-bolt. You can see one U-bolt there and one U-bolt right here, holding the axle on to each side. I'm just making sure nothing's scraping and so forth. There's the linkage for forward and reverse, and there's really no way I'm going to squeeze it on there. So I'm going to have to do something different. I think you guys could see the little spring right there. That's kind of holding it in forward. So right now, this thing went from only going backwards to only going forward. What I need to do is smash the air cleaner on it, then we'll take it out for a ride. Here we go. She's going out for her first ride. Now I have no brakes. Let's be hoping they're not too necessary. Seems to ride okay. We'll try to get it up around the back just to give it a little bit of a shake out. Now, when I thought about buying this thing, what I thought about the most was the um, high flatbed. I figured it would make it easier, I mean not all that high, but it'd make it easier for unloading the pickup, the Tacoma. Actually, it rides pretty good. You know what? I'm happy with this. This is not a donut machine. This is actually meant to do some work. I know it's the only thing here. Yeah, my wife. Uh, my wife told me that I should like clean up the driveway that it was beginning to look like um, home for all the misfit toys. We'll see if we fit through here. Maybe, maybe not. It's got a pretty narrow wheelbase pretty tight turning parameter. The tires are close, oops, close together. Just hooked on to something back here. Bad thing is it's heavy. Ah. We all heavy. Hang on. Okay, on the road again. Actually, the front of this thing rides real nice. The back tires I put on it are a little bigger than the ones that were originally on it, just a little bit taller. Yeah, got to keep the target practice up. From a height point of view, I think I'm up a little higher. This thing is just idling along, quite honestly. If, uh, if 
I opened it up, it'd go faster than I want to go. Especially back here, where I'm really rather not break it. So, what do you guys think? We're off-road, off-roading at Taylor Dunn. Yeah, I think, I think when I finish this thing up, it'll become a real useful project. And what I have left is, I need this thing to go forward and reverse, as you saw from tangling up with the Lakota there. Not being able to go backwards is a problem. This thing has 12 horsepower, which I think would be more than enough horsepower to blow out this Yamaha transaxle. This is the first time I've ever driven on this tra transaxle. The golf cart that came in, the frame was completely rotted out and it didn't run. So I cut it loose from the cart and I did manage to get the engine running I used my portable CDI to get the engine running by the way golf cart schematics are horrible now, there's a little muddy here yeah it's spinning Anyway, looks like old Harvey has to get on the stick and think about cutting some grass. I don't know what the weather's been like by you guys. For me, it, always, it seems to rain every day. Not a lot. But, you know, like showers in the morning, rain for 15 minutes, stop, rain for 10 minutes, stop. Then in the afternoon to evening, we get a little more. Then the next morning, sometimes the sun actually comes out. But then shortly after lunch, it rains again. I don't know, I'm happy as heck with this. I really wish, even if I had to put money out, like 500 bucks, if I knew I could get the right transaxle um, in good shape, not one about to fail, um, I, I would have actually paid that. I, I would have liked this to be able to handle its 1,500 pounds. I think that golf cart transaxle is going to limit me, limit me to like 500 pounds. Enough to put an all-terrain vehicle on the back, but uh, not enough to do everything I'd really like this thing to do. So my wife said the driveway is beginning to look like a cluster of misfit toys. At least this one runs and starts with the key and does everything else it's supposed to do. I hope you guys enjoyed the ride. I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch, comment, and to subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out there and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.